Pete the Duck. Hey, I'm Pete the Duck, and this is Forge with Pete, Episode 12, Rock, Paper, Scissors. Rock, Paper, Scissors is the classic game of Rock, Paper, Scissors brought to Halo. I actually first created this in Halo Reach, and at the time, it was the most complicated thing I had ever created in Forge. But there was some room for improvement. And so I decided to take advantage of some of the new features available in Halo 4's Forge and make it even better, and that's what I've done. This is rock, paper, scissors, better than before, and it's actually a little more complicated. Uh, the mechanism behind this map is really fun for me. <laughs> I enjoyed building it and making it possible. But the great thing is, as complicated as this map is, the gameplay is super simple. All you gotta do is make a choice, rock, paper, or scissors. The map automatically determines the winner based on what you and your opponent selected, and that's it. You don't have to worry about what's going on in the background. It's simple, good, clean, fun. This is a two-player map, so you'll want to keep that in mind, and uh, let's jump in and find out how to play. So like I said, all you gotta do is make a choice, rock, paper, or scissors. There are three shoots in front of you. You have 10 seconds to pick one. That's it. So let's see here. I think I'm going to go with scissors. Let's go down the scissors here. So my opponent is on the other side. It's Firewolf. We can see him falling right there. He chose, wait for it. He chose paper. I chose scissors. He chose paper. So this platform is telling us what we'd selected and it gives me the option to kill him, scoring the point for the win. And that's how you play rock, paper, scissors. Whatever you and your opponent select, you're going to end up on a platform that visually demonstrates it and gives the victor the chance to defeat the loser, scoring a point and ending the round. And you can play as many times as you want, trying to outsmart and outwit your opponent. It's a simple game, but it can be as complex as you want it to be. Sometimes you'll have to wait a little bit for the mechanism to sort you and your opponent out. It's trying to determine the correct platform to place you and your opponent on. So let's see what's going to happen here. It looks like, because I know how this mechanism works, it looks like we're going to have a tie round here. So wait another second, and we're going to end up on a platform here. We both chose paper, so we can't kill each other. We're just going to wait for this return to battlefield to kill us. It's a tie. Nobody wins this round. And that's just a demonstration of rock, paper, scissors. So before you go, let's jump into Forge, because there's a couple cool things I'd like to show you about this map. Okay, so here we are in Forge, and let's start with the easy part, the spawning. The spawning setup on this map is really simple. I have an initial spawn point on this side, and an initial spawn point on the other side. To support up to 16 players, what I have done is I have placed respawn points up here, and what that means is that if there are more than two players in the game, there's going to be one player spawning on each side of the platform, and any extra players are going to spawn up here on top, the base player traits do not permit these players to move, so they're going to be stationary inside of a kill boundary. So they're going to be killed 10 seconds into the game. They're not going to be able to interfere, but they're going to be able to watch the outcome through their death camera. I really recommend you just play with two people, but, you know, if you have a third person, you can play with them. It's going to randomly select who's going to be the two people to actually participate in the game. So that's how I've set up spawning. Uh, another cool thing I can show you is the... Capture plate. I've used the capture plate at the bottom of these chutes, and the reason I have done that is because capture plates are kind of cool. They are solid objects, but not really. So you can shoot them, you can't see through them, you can bounce grenades off of them, but you can actually walk right through them. And so that has helped me out because otherwise, if they weren't there, you could look down there and you might be able to see what your opponent selected, but with the capture plate there, you can't see. So that's why I've used capture plates. They're kind of cool. So the way the map is set up is I have three towers of mechanisms, and they're kind of uh, arranged here. It, there, there's a really specific design to this, and I'm not going to go into it because it's, it's really complicated. I'm going to explain it on my website. If you're interested, check the link at the end of the video. Go to my website. I'll have a written explanation because if I tried to show you in this video, I would just confuse me and confuse you, and no one would enjoy anything. But what I want to point out is there is a different platform for each possible solution. And so that's how the game works. It relocates you and your opponent to the correct platform based on what you and your opponent selected. Um, I've used trait zones. So for example, on this platform here, the player on the left is going to win. And so I've used a trait zone here, which is Bravo. 
and I've given the Bravo player invulnerability, and I've allowed them to do damage. But for the other player here, they are in the Delta trait zone, and that trait zone properties have normal damage resistance, and they do no damage. So the player on the left here is going to be able to shoot and kill the player on the right, but the player on the right cannot shoot and kill the player on the left. So that's how I've set up these platforms. The other thing that I'd like to show you is that landmines are kind of cool in that if a player's damage modifier and melee damage are set to 0%, they cannot destroy a landmine. They can shoot it, they can jump on it, they can punch it, they can do whatever they want. They will not be able to destroy a landmine. And so what I've done here is I have two landmines on the bottom of these containers. And I've used a trait zone. This one's set up to alpha. So if I go down here, you can see the alpha player has a damage modifier. By default, the base player traits configured in the game type are set to 0%. But for alpha, they're set to 500%. And so what that means is right here, the player on the left can destroy their landmine, but the player on right cannot destroy theirs. Now, of course, these are close together, so it's going to cause a chain reaction and actually destroy both of them when a player on the left falls through there. It's just kind of a cool thing you can do. I've been able to create a trap door here that can only be triggered by one of the two players by using trait zones and that unique characteristic of landmines. And the other thing I can tell you about is the reason that this map is designed in this strange floating configuration is that I've actually used a trick to effectively get more teleporters than I have actually have available to me because I've used all 12 teleporters. But the cool thing is the height at which you enter a teleporter is the same height at which you will exit it. So by using these platforms that are spaced apart based on elevation, I've actually been able to use one teleporter to actually function as three separate teleporters. So effectively, I have way more than 12 teleporters, but I've only actually used 12 teleporter objects. So I'm not going to go into specific detail about that. I just want to mention it. It's something that might be useful occasionally when you're forging. But like I said, if you want a full breakdown, jump on my website. I'll have the link at the end of the video. I hope you enjoy these little tips. I know normally I break these maps down, but I could just not make this make sense. Anyway, if you want to download the map, if you want to give it a try, go face your opponent in rock, paper, scissors. All you need to do is go in Halo 4's main menu to file browser and do a map variant search. The map variant will be called rock, paper, scissors. And it will be located in the file share of my gamer tag, Pete the Duck. Now you're also going to need the game type, so you're going to need to do a search for the game type as well. And that is also called Rock, Paper, Scissors, and is also under my gamer tag, Pete the Duck. So thanks for watching.